the climb to the top of the tower is no obstacle for this seven-year-old. Not allowed to talk each other. And please wait a minute. Her father, Keisuke Kishimoto, will be next up. At the top is the spot where border guards once watched over the Berlin Wall. The Japanese family is visiting Berlin for the first time, and part of the trip is a sobering lesson in recent German history. When catch some people go Kesuke away, Kishimoto so says he's saddened by the symbolism of the tower. He knows that the soldiers who once stood here prevented East Germans from fleeing to the West, and part of their job was to shoot them if necessary. By chance, some of the towers still exist, providing visitors with a bird's eye view of the past. Of the 155 kilometers of wall that used to surround West Berlin, little remains today. The tower is located at Potsdamer Platz, formerly a barren no man's land between the divided sectors of Berlin. Our guide describes how he and two others discovered the tower after the fall of the Berlin Wall. He says it had been forgotten by the city. They knew this tower, built in 1969, was the oldest surviving remnant of the division of Berlin. It's the last tower of its kind, so they fought to preserve it. There used to be 200 of them along the border. Mr. Kishimoto does not understand why the Germans have tried to erase many traces of the former divide. We have to uh, remember the history. Yeah, so uh, that kind of tower is very important, I think. From the old and the new towers on Potsdamer Platz, we make our way through the once divided city where socialism and capitalism confronted each other, where the Cold War has left its mark on different neighborhoods. 25 years after the fall of the wall, has the border really disappeared? There must be something left, aside from the familiar tourist magnets of Checkpoint Charlie. And the East Side Gallery. On the outskirts of Berlin, there's a freshly painted section of the wall. And behind it, a curious story. Local historian Joachim Kuhlmann tells us about one of the wall's weak spots. Almost a hundred people were shot trying to scale the wall, but none of them died here. A dead-end residential street that protruded into West Berlin, surrounded on three sides by the wall. Berliners called it the duck's beak. Joachim Kuhlmann says there were several escape attempts here and all succeeded. Luckily, not a single shot was fired here because none of the escapes were detected by the border guards. All diese Fluchtversuche von der Polizei von den Grenzern nicht entdeckt wurden. Back then, the Schulz family lived on the Walden Street. And 25 years later, there's still a piece at the end of their garden. Theo Schulz says he isn't bothered by it. Actually, it has its advantages, because the wall absorbs heat, and he can put plants there that otherwise don't grow so well. And he says, when the Berlin Wall was standing, it also had its good points too because they never had to worry about break-ins. They didn't need to lock their doors. Today, he says, it's different. But he doesn't wish to return to the past. Theo Schulz's fruit and vegetable garden once marked the beginning of West Berlin. Although the couple couldn't cross to the other side, they learned to live with the reality of the wall. I ask Elizabeth Schulz if they wave to their neighbours in the house over in the west. But she says they weren't allowed. 
She says a family with three children lived next door, and on the other side of the wall, an old couple lived in a wooden house. The old couple sometimes threw over chocolate for the children, and the family was forced to move out. An old photo shows Elizabeth Schultz in front of the wall in her garden. Today, it's just part of the garden furniture. Elizabeth says that there used to be an electric fence at the end of what is now the vegetable patch. The spot where she's now standing was no man's land, with border patrols to ensure that nobody tried to escape. In the middle of Berlin, less than three kilometers from Alexanderplatz, we find another remnant of the border. Along the river Spree, on a section of the former death strip which hasn't been built on, there's a semi-legal settlement known as Teepee Land. About 30 people live here, constantly threatened by eviction. They come from Europe, Asia and the Americas. Hello. 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 Agustin is from Argentina, and he built his home himself, along with all his furniture. For the past year, he's been living in Tipi land. And he says the experience has taught him a lot about creating something new out of waste. He builds with wooden shipping pallets, recycling them to fit his needs. It's not a community of anarchists. They hold meetings and democratic votes, and some of the gardens almost appear bourgeois. Another resident is Oliver Gore, a former banker from London. Freedom is based here. Berlin really is the place. If you want to be a free person, you should live. I mean, they say all the crazy people go to Berlin, but Berlin really, for me, is that. And, I mean, there's the gentrification coming and all this kind of crazy capitalist extremism. But Berlin still hasn't gone that far yet. An old bunker used by East German border guards serves as the community center. Fernand Schmitz from Luxembourg looks after the building. The former restaurant manager shows us around. He says three boats were moored here, setting off to patrol the river Spree. And here vorne haben wir noch so an uraltes uh, telephone here. This old telephone also dates back to that era. Den Zeiten, ja. Now they hold concerts and theater performances in the space. They also show visitors around, like some Chinese tourists who have just turned up. If you want, I can give you a tour of the remains of the wall here. If you're interested. Yeah, of yeah, course. Thank yeah? You. yeah, that's yeah, Come on, let's, let's yeah. go and uh, I'll show you the wall. So that might be a bit more interesting for you as well to film. This wall over here mm -hmm. used to be the wall from the restricted zone. Uh -huh. The restricted zone is where you need the special passes to come. Uh -huh. And if you pass the restricted zone, uh -huh. they start shooting at you. Yeah. The Chinese students want to know why the remains of the wall should be saved. Uh, it should be preserved uh, for future generations that people not only just read about it, but actually can come and see those things, how they were in the time when the Berlin Wall was up, you know? The dark side of the wall is the theme of a nature walk for these schoolchildren. They're retracing the route of the former death strip, and they discover that the name should be taken literally. Their teacher, Marianne Schibilla, explains that this wooden board is a memorial to mark the spot where Joachim Meer was shot dead as he tried to escape across the border. It shows that he was born on April the 3rd, 1945, and shot on December the 3rd, 1964. 
He was just 19 years old when he died. The teacher tells his students that Joachim Meir had his whole life in front of him, but he was killed because he wanted a different life. These students were born after the wall came down, but Joachim Meir's story makes it easier for them to grasp the past. As they dig in the ground for a nature project, they stumble upon another piece of history. The students decide to unearth it. It appears to be a fence post from the old border. The 15-year-olds dig up the relic, 25 years after the fall of the wall. <laughs> One of the students points out a hole in the post where an electric cable used to pass through. The cable registered every movement, information that was sent to the watchtower that's still standing a few meters away. As well as teaching, Mariam Shibila looks after the tower. Found objects from the surrounding forest are on display. Bits of the border fence and spiked mats known as Stalin grass, which are today a rarity. Marianne says the German Historical Museum in Bonn wanted the Stalin grass as an exhibit, but they refused to give it away. 25 years after the wall crumbled in a political sense, its physical presence can still be found. <laughs>